Peptic ulcers are open sores that develop on the inside lining of the stomach and the upper portion of the small intestines. The most common symptom of peptic ulcer is stomach pain. Looking at the structure, there is the oesophagus, stomach, it can be gastric ulcer or we can also have duodenal ulcers. Welcome to SR Medicine. Don't forget to subscribe, notification button, like, and also share. Peptic ulcer disease. This constitutes gastric ulcers that occur on the inside of the stomach. Also, duodenal ulcers that occur on the inside of the upper portion of the small intestine. That is the duodenum. The main cause of the ulcer, that is the helicobacter pylori. Also, long-term use of NSAIDs, drugs like ibuprofen, naproxen. Stress and spicy foods do not cause peptic ulcers but they may worsen the condition. What we should know, duodenum ulcers is most common. Gastric ulcer pain worsens on eating and when putting on tight clothes. Duodenum ulcers improve on eating. Therefore, this is so good during diagnosis. Symptoms, burning stomach pain, feeling of fullness, intolerance to fatty foods, heart burn, nausea, vomiting or vomiting blood which may appear red, dark blood in stools or stools that are black, trouble breathing, unexplained weight loss, appetite changes, dysphagia, indigestion, hematemesis, blood vomiting. Stomach has a protective layer made up of mucus and bicarbonate solution. The mucus layer, gastric acid solution is above it and the mucosa lining. Anything which can increase acid production and also reduce the production of the protective layer may cause the ulceration and also the presence of H. pylori. The H. pylori commonly live in the mucus layer that covers and protects the tissues that line the stomach and the small intestine. Often, this bacterium cause no problem, but it can lead to inflammation of the stomach lining, producing an ulcer. It may be transmitted from person to person by close contact, such as kissing, or people may also contract H. pylori through food and water. Looking at some of its features, it has the flagella for chemotactic movement, to penetrate the thick layer of mucus, it has the urease. The urease, this is an enzyme that breaks down urea to form ammonia and carbon dioxide that neutralize the acid in the stomach. That's why this bacterium can live in the acidic environment. It has secretory enzymes like the mucinase, protease, lipase. These cause gastric mucosa injury the ripoporisaccharides to adhere to host cells and also cause inflammation. Exotoxins like virtuating toxin, VAC-A, causes gastric wall injury. Works as an adhesion molecule. This binds to mucosa, initiate inflammatory signal causing inflammation and also to, to produce more cytokines that recruit more cells. Bind to mitochondrial membrane to cause leakage of cytochrome C that triggers inflammation. Inflammation and apoptosis cause damage of the stomach walls to cause ulceration. This bacteria has the urease. Therefore, it can neutralize the acidic gastric layer. Then moves through the mucus layer to damage the mucosal cell. Damage the cells can cause inflammation, also recruitment of more cells via the production of inflammatory cytokines to cause further damage causing ulcer. Risky factor, continuous use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, insects like ibuprofen and naproxen. Smoking may increase the risk of peptic ulcers in people who are infected with H. pylori. Alcohol can irritate and erode the mucus lining of the stomach and it increases the amount of stomach acid that's produced. Untreated stress, spicy foods, these worsen the pain. All the above increase acid production by the stomach. Watch my video on inside. Complications. Uh, whenever the ulcers are untreated, it may lead to internal bleeding. 
Bleeding can occur as slow blood loss that leads to anemia or severe blood loss that may require hospitalization or blood transfusion. It may cause obstruction. Mainly peptic ulcers can block passage of food through the digestive tract, causing the individual to become full easily, vomit, and also lose weight. Perforation in the stomachal wall. Mainly peptic ulcers can create a perforation in the wall of the stomach or small intestines, causing increased risk of peritonitis. Gastric cancer. Individuals infected with H. pylori have an increased risk of gastric cancer. During healing, it can form a scar tissue leading to narrowing of pyloric sphincter, that is pyloric stenosis. Symptoms of pyloric stenosis may include nausea and vomiting, reflux, upper abdominal pain, distension of the abdomen, and all these occur after eating. Diagnosis blood tests may be done to check for antibodies to H. pyloric, the urea breathing test, stool tests to test for the antigen uh, this looks for antigens of h pyrori endoscopy management there is a need to decrease the production of acids and increase the mucus protective layer and also eradicate h pyrori it's a gram negative road bacterium whenever we manage therefore there are no erosions no ulcers no bleeding and perforations no internal bleeding and no death no ulcers, no gastroesophageal reflux disease, no baritis esophagus, no esophageal adenocarcinoma. During management, uh, prostaglandin analogs may be used, proton pump inhibitors, H2 blockers may be used, anti-acids, cytoprotectives may also be used. Therefore, it is always good to limit insides because they increase the risk of developing an ulcer. Antibiotic use usually two antibiotics are prescribed plus one proton pump inhibitor for example amoxicillin clarithromycin metronidazole and tetracycline proton pump does like lansoprazole omeprazole pantoprazole labeprazole esomepismus subsalicylic combined with the proton pump inhibitors and antibiotics usually this drug protects the stomach lining however there is always new combinations in calicia this combines two antibiotics rifabutin and amoxicillin with a proton pump inhibitor omeprazole into a single capsule. Uh, there are some other numerous combinations, for example, OBMT, omeprazole, bismuth, metronidazole, tetracycline. There is also another one, levofloxacin. This is a triple therapy. It has a proton pump inhibitor like omeprazole and the two antibiotics like levofloxacin and amoxicillin. Then Ocram, omeprazole, which is a proton pump inhibitor, two antibiotics, clarithromycin and amoxicillin. All these are taken for 14 days. Any mistake without taking the right medication at the right time equals resistance. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe notification button as I make more content.